Late May, the lino flowers that painted Trista's spring fields had faded, replaced by lush greenery and a refreshing breeze. With the trials of last month's field study behind us, we found ourselves caught up once more in the bustle of school life. Both our combat training and academic studies continued to become more and more demanding, but May also heralded the beginning of specialist classes more befitting a military academy. The Orbal Revolution 50 years ago changed the way wars were fought forever. There are a number of reasons for this fundamental change, but four factors in particular that I would argue to be the most important. The first is the invention of orbital guns, cannons, and other weaponry. The increased accuracy of these weapons, as well as their ease of maintenance and manufacture, instantly rendered all other firearms obsolete. The second factor is the associated mechanization of the military. Orbital technology led to the formation of armored divisions made up of tanks and armored cars. The impact this new kind of tactical unit had on the battlefield, with its enhanced offense, defense, and mobility, cannot be overstated. The third factor is the invention of airships. Warships that rely on the gravity manipulation ability of a flight field to remain in the air simply did not exist before the revolution. The sudden addition of a whole new dimension to war, the sky, made countless new strategies viable that were previously unimaginable. And the last factor is the creation of an entirely new practical science, which may be the biggest, most important change of all. Without orbital technology, such a concept would scarcely even have been conceivable, but now we'd be virtually crippled without it. Reen Schwarzer, can you tell the class what that new scientific breakthrough was? Why did Lady Laura have to be placed in a class like that? I was truly looking forward to studying alongside her. Is that girl next to her not the one who scored the highest on the entrance exam? I believe so, though I also hear she's a mere commoner. There's something about that silvered hair girl that I find oddly soothing. I wonder if she'd let me stroke her hair if I were to ask nicely. That's quite enough, idle chatter. We are members of class one. You're above such droll behavior. As well, we cannot allow ourselves to be bettered by that rabble, even in something as insignificant as the culinary arts. Uh, of course not. I'm so accustomed to our chef doing all of the cooking, however, that I must admit, I'm finding this all rather challenging. Could they make it a little less obvious they're talking about us? I mean, seriously. It stands to reason they'd be curious about our class. It's hard to blame them for that, at least. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've wished that plenty already. <laughs> getting the hang of using an orbital computer. 
Likewise. I was lost at first, but it's slowly beginning to make more sense. Well, it is cutting-edge technology here in Erebonia, so I think most people are confused until they've gotten used to it. Machias and Yusis both picked it up surprisingly quickly, though. Yeah, but academics are their thing. And I'm pretty sure Machias has been interested in computers for a while, too. Yusis also seems to get the hang of things far quicker than most people, even if he's not interested in them at all. Which probably just adds insult to injury for Machias. I'll bet. I hear they were really butting heads during last month's field study. They were. At one point, things almost took a violent turn. We were able to hold them back, but I don't think we could have kept them under control for long if Instructor Sarah hadn't arrived. <sighs> we really need to do something about them, but I have no idea what. I don't either, but you're right. This has gone on for way too long as it is. It needs to stop. Green Schwarzer. <sighs> huh? I isn't he from Class 1? Patrick, is it? That is correct. My full name is Patrick T. Hyarks. I don't believe I need to say anything more than that. What? So, you're from the Hyarks family. Are they prestigious? About as prestigious as they come. The Hyarksies are one of the four great houses. Though they're slightly lower in rank than the Albareas. <laughs> I I'm sorry. I meant no offense. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I didn't come here to talk to commoners or foreigners. I came to bring gladsome tidings to you, Rain Schwarzer. I am generously extending you welcome to make use of the accommodations on the third floor of the Student Union Building. You mean... The third floor? That's where the Noble Salon is, right? Your father may be a mere baron, but that still makes you a noble. And though you've had the misfortune of sharing a class with this riffraff, I have decided to use my good name as a member of the High Arms family to afford you the privilege of joining us. I do hope you appreciate it. Well, how can I turn him down politely? This hardly strikes me as the best place to be recruiting new members. Yusis. Yusis Salberea? I wasn't aware the third son of the High Arms family counted playing factions among his hobbies. If you wished for company in the salon, should you not have come to me first? You? You've been invited countless times. You, you simply choose not to come. Despite there being no shortage of second years practically begging for your company. I have no interest. <laughs> Suit yourself, then. But you... Schwarzer, make sure you think long and hard about this. If you care about your future, you need to start thinking about the connections you're making and the sides you're taking. Huh. He's certainly not shy. No, he's not. I wasn't sure how to turn him down either. Thanks for stepping in, Yusis. <laughs> I wasn't trying to help you. But I did cause you some trouble during last month's field study, so... No. That's all. Last month's field study? Is he...? Yeah. I think he means the run-in we had with the Provincial Army. Ah. So he feels partially responsible for his family's actions, then. He must have been looking for a way to apologize to you. Huh. I guess he has a nice side after all.
All rise. Bow. Well, I'll see you later, Reen. Later. Oh, are you two going to club activities today? Yeah, I am. Did you want to have dinner together later? We've been eating in the cafeteria an awful lot lately, so maybe we could go to the cafe in Trista today for a change of scenery? Sounds good to me. You want to just meet up in the entrance hall later? Sure. See you then. Um... Oh, hi, Elisa. Are you off to club practice too? Oh, <laughs> no. Not today. Um... What is it? Is there something you wanted to ask me? I... it's nothing! I'll see you later! There is one question I'd like to ask, though. <laughs> Did you do something else to upset her? Not that I'm aware of. Although, I suppose it's possible I did something wrong without even realizing it. Knowing her... <laughs> I was speaking in jest, I assure you. Are you planning on going into the old schoolhouse again tomorrow? Yeah. The principal did ask me to keep an eye on it, so I thought I'd make time for a quick look inside. Alright. Please let me know when you're planning to begin the expedition, if you would. I have club activities tomorrow, but as far as I'm concerned, the old schoolhouse takes priority. Thanks. I'll let you know. Excellent. I'll see you tomorrow, then. You're in the chess club, aren't you, Machius? Or are you planning on studying in the library? <laughs> Since when was it any of your business what I choose to do after class? Uh, no, I just... Have I... done something to upset you? Not especially. It's actually my fault for being deceived so easily in the first place. Oh... Let's just say I haven't got a drop of noble blood in my veins. So I guess we're all in equal standing here. I'm really sorry. I wasn't trying to deceive you. I just... Save your breath. Whether you're a noble or not is beside the point. The bottom line is you lied to me. And I simply cannot trust those who lie. That's all there is to it. I... Please, think nothing of it. Oh, um, am I intruding? Oh, no, not at all. Did you need something? I accidentally left one of my textbooks in my desk, so I came back to fetch it. Ah, here it is. What subject? Take a look. Studying hard as always, I see. Except, wait, intermediate? Isn't that part of the Sunday school curriculum? Seems a bit basic for you. Oh, <laughs> it's not for me. I promised to help Fee with her math studies. I found this at a bookshop in town and thought it might be of some use to her. Ah, okay. Which reminds me, I should really be going. I'm sure she's waiting for me by now. I'll see you later, Reen. Take care. And don't worry. Huh? I'm sure Machias doesn't hate you or anything. If you can find some way of making him realize how you feel, I'm sure he'll understand. It's just getting through to him that might be tough. Yeah. Keep at it. If Emma believes I can make it work, then I'll believe it too. I should probably also get going. Maybe I'll wander around the academy grounds for a while before returning to the dorm. Hey there, first year.
Oh, it's you. I'm not going to play along with your scams this time, so you might as well be on your way. <laughs> I wasn't trying to hustle you before, honest. Did you, uh, figure out how I did it, though? If you really want your 50 mirror back, I'll be happy to hand it over. But wouldn't you rather feel like you earned it? Come on, what do you say? Hmm... There had to have been a trick to it. Some form of sleight of hand. Something that wasn't as it seemed. If I had to guess, I'd say the crux of this illusion was... Of course! Pretty sure he had a bag at his feet. Which means... You threw the coin in the air, but let it fall instead of trying to catch it. You let it fall right into the open bag, lying in wait for it at your feet. Am I right? Yeah, not bad. Well, I wasn't expecting you to figure it out so quickly. So I was right. Yep, spot on. And a promise is a promise, so here's your 50 mirror bag. Uh, sorry. I've only got ten mirror on me. Ugh, it's fine. Just forget it. It's only fifty mirror. You can keep it. Oh, really? Well, that's mighty generous. Hey! Stop trying to leech money off innocent first years, you louse. Oh, crap. It's the she-devil. What? This girl somewhere before. Yurene, I take it. I've been hearing all about you from Toa and George. Sounds like you pulled off some pretty amazing stuff in your field study last month. I'm surprised you know my name, actually. I didn't think I'd been doing anything worthy of such attention. Yes, I should still officially introduce myself, though. I'm Reen Schwarzer. It's nice to meet you. Same. I'm Angelica, Angelica Rogner. Glad I could finally make your acquaintance. Rogner? As in, Marquis Rogner? Head of one of the four great houses? <laughs> Same reaction every time, I swear. Yeah, I'm his unworthy daughter. But he doesn't really want to have anything to do with me since I go around dressed like this. Uh, I think it's less how you dress and more how you behave. Where are you going on that bike at this hour, anyway? Oh, George finally finished tuning the Orwell engine. So I figured I'd give it a run to the capital and back and see how it holds up. <sighs> sure must be nice not to have a care in the world. <laughs> Look who's talking. So you do ride it like a bike. Later. I'm thinking of putting in a request for you sometime. If I do, I'd sure appreciate a swift response. I... Huh. Lost for words? That's a little something George put together a while back. He calls it an orbital bike. Pretty cool, huh? It is. Kind of like a steel horse. I'm guessing you can't buy those in any shops? Nah. The Ruhr Institute of Technology started putting that one together as part of a test. Then George finished it off. Jellica put up the money for the parts herself. Oh, but Toa and I helped out too. Sounds like it must have been a pretty challenging project. Are you on good terms with Toa and George then? Angelica said she'd heard all about me from them. Maybe you had a little something to do with that, too? Well, we're all from different classes, but we've kind of stuck together for a while now. Come to think of it, I never did introduce myself, did I? Hmm. 
Name's Crow Armbrust, second year, class five. I'm sure I'll catch you around again. Later. So, his name's Crow, huh? Angelica's the daughter of Marquis Rodner. Toa's the student council president. George is head of the engineering club. It seems like every second year I meet is somebody important.